bullets fly into a home, striking a woman inside. And now police are trying to track down the gunman. Happened just after 8 last night at a home on Cranklin Circle in Clarksville. We're told the suspect shot through the front door, hitting the woman in the back. She was taken to the hospital, but is expected to survive. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 931-645-TIPS. A possible arson investigation is now underway after a church and a brewery caught fire overnight. Firefighters went to Old Salem Road just before midnight. The building is home to Experience Community Church and Mayday Brewery. We're told someone set a couple of small fires in some donation bins inside and a gas can was found nearby, so it doesn't take a brain surgeon to realize this one looks bogus. The brewery was not badly damaged. The church did have some smoke and water damage. The fire marshal is back out there this morning for a closer look. And such a tragedy here. A little girl has died after strong storms rolled into eastern Tennessee yesterday. The three-year-old was killed after a tree fell onto her family's mobile home in Loudoun County. Deputies say she was asleep in her room when it happened. Luckily, no one else in that home was hurt. Yesterday's storms may have also started a couple of house fires in the mid-state, at least one house and one barn. It appears lightning caused a townhouse here in Antioch to go up around 5 o'clock. Crews quickly got there. They put the flames out, so the smoke, uh, the home only had some minor damage, mainly smoke upstairs. Lightning may also be to blame for a bigger fire over in Cheatham County. This barn went up in flames, and you can see it's just destroyed now. This picture sent to us by Brian Williams through I Contribute. We appreciate that. It's a good reminder if you see news happening where you are, like Brian did, send us photos or videos to I Contribute at newschannel5.com. Include your name and, of course, the location of where it's happening. Happening tonight, we could hear the final word on several expensive and controversial projects around the Nashville area. Cuthbert Langley joins us from the historic courthouse this morning with more. So, Cuthbert, what are these projects we're talking about? Good morning, Amy. Well, there's three of them that really have captured the attention of so many people these last couple of weeks. The first of which are plans to move the jail to South Nashville. The second is to move the police headquarters to Jefferson Street. And the third talks about putting up a flood wall around downtown Nashville. There have been several amendments filed within the last couple of days, mostly focusing on plans to move the jail. Now, that plan has really caused a lot of people to be furious with the sheriff. So what we know right now is that a handful of those amendments have been filed, either asking to remove the project altogether or at least delaying plans to move the jail until next year. But there was an amendment filed yesterday that would pull funding for several projects in South Nashville if the jail move is not approved. Council member Steve Glover introduced that amendment, which pulls millions from projects for new elementary school, community center, as well as parks and green space for Southeast Nashville. While opponents have called Glover's amendment, quote, blackmail, the councilman says it's anything but. They're going to say, well, I'm taken away from the account. I'm not. In my mind, I clearly am not. I'm saying that if you don't want the jail there and if it gets removed there and we have to renovate that property downtown, then you got to help us pay for the lost revenue. Simple as that. Now, that meeting will begin tonight at 6 o'clock, but several of those amendments have to be officially introduced and then argued before that committee meeting, which so obviously that member meeting will be earlier than expected. So all of the debate, all of that will come in when the committee meeting, or excuse me, when the council member meeting begins at 6 p.m. tonight, the amendments will be discussed a little bit earlier. We will have full coverage beginning tonight on News Channel 5 at 10 o'clock. We're live in downtown Nashville this morning. I'm Cuthbert Langley, News Channel 5 HD. All right, Cuthbert, thank you. And one of the two teenagers accused of killing a pizza employee down in Murray County will be tried as an adult. Darius Fitzpatrick, one of the two you see coming in on the surveillance video right there, was arraigned yesterday. He was 17 years old when he and another person shot Gordo Schaefer during a robbery at the Papa John's in Columbia in 2014. So far, no trial date's been set for those two. A fiery crash has claimed the lives of two young children in Kentucky. Troopers say Gwendolyn Till was driving on the Western Kentucky Parkway in Ohio County when she crossed the median and slammed into a semi truck. Till was taken to the hospital with injuries, but three-year-old DeAnthony Till and five-year-old Arzaria Irvin were killed. 
We're told neither child was wearing a seatbelt. No word yet on what caused the crash or whether charges will be filed. We have new details about a tragic accident that left a seven-year-old girl dead in Millersville. Police say there were no signs the driver had been drinking when he ran over Tori Hicks. The little girl was playing in the driveway during a family gathering on Saturday when she ran behind the truck as it was backing out. No charges will be filed.